Hi Bobcats, this is Miss Lee, and today's lesson is going to be on measurement conversions. In the United States, we have two different measurement systems. The first one is the customary system. This is your cups, your ounces, your pounds, your tons, your inches, your miles, your yards. And we've been using this system for centuries and centuries and centuries. The second is the metric system. The metric system is the more easier system to work with. It is based on our number system of tens. And it's the system that most of the world uses. Now we, the United States, it's hard for us to give up things that we've been using for a long time. It's kind of like, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? So we still use the customary system a lot, but there are more and more fields, such as the science field and the medical field, that are moving to using the metric system versus the customary system. So we are lucky enough to have to learn how to do conversions in both systems. Yay! So this video is actually on conversions within the metric units. All right, let's talk about the three different measurement systems. The first is the length. The length, the basic unit of length in the metric system is the meter. All other metric units of length are defined in terms of the meter. So the metric measurements that we use in sixth grade are the kilometer, the meter, the centimeters, and the millimeters. There are other ones, but these are the ones that we use in sixth grade. This is what's going to be important to know. And no, you do not have to memorize these. You will be giving, given reference charts that have these measurement conversions on there for you to use with your homework, with your test, with STAR. So you don't have to worry about memorizing them. Volume. Volume is the amount that can be held in a container. And there's only two measurements that we're dealing with in sixth grade, and that's the liter and the milliliters. Mass. The metric term used for the weight of an object. It represents the amount of material that an object contains. And we use in sixth grade the kilograms, the grams, and the milligrams. So let's get started. Mm -hmm. Now, we're going to use a proportion to make these conversions. Yes, you can use the reference chart and you can do it mathematically. You can look at the chart and you can be like, oh, I just need to multiply this. Oh, I just need to divide this. But we're going to do proportions because next year in seventh grade, you're going to have to learn how to convert between metric and customary systems. And you're going to be using proportions to do that. So we're going to get you ready for the proportion method. So let's start with our first example. Eight centimeters equals how many millimeters? So we're wanting to convert centimeters to millimeters. The first thing you want to do is look at your chart and you want to find the unit rate. Which one is larger, centimeters or millimeters? Well, it's centimeters. And it tells us that one centimeter equals 10 millimeters. This is what I call our unit rate. And that's what we're gonna start our proportion with. You're gonna write the unit rate. Write it horizontally, just like you see on your chart. One centimeter equals 10 millimeters. This goes in the top part of your proportion. The bottom part will be replaced with what you're given and what you're trying to find. You're given eight centimeters. So that goes under the centimeters, and you're trying to find how many, how many millimeters. So this is what the bottom would look like, the bottom of your proportion, the denominator part. Then you just need to figure out, do you need to multiply or do you need to divide? And the easiest way to do that is to find what you know. You know eight centimeters, you're looking for millimeters. You're going from the known to the unknown, from one to 10, from eight to the unknown. So you're going from left to right. To go from one to 10, we just multiply by 10. Use the same scale factor, multiply eight times 10, and you get 80 millimeters. Quick review, multiplying by powers of 10, or dividing by powers of 10. If I have eight, and I wanna multiply it, I want it to get larger. So in a whole number, the decimal point goes at the end. With powers of 10, when you're multiplying or dividing by powers of 10, all you have to do is move the decimal point 
however many place values you want to make it larger or smaller. So looking at this, we're multiplying by 10. How many zeros are there? There is one zero. That means we want to increase our number, make it bigger by one place value. So we're going to move the decimal point one place value. If we move it to the left, it's going to make the number smaller. So we don't want to move it to the left. If we go here, it becomes 8 tenths instead of 8 whole. And 8 tenths is not larger than 8 whole. So we're going to move the decimal point. We're going to slide it over one place to the right. And if you look, you can see that's what it's doing here. Our arrow is moving to the right. That's why these arrows are so important. Because there's one zero, we move it, slide it over one place value. This is the new decimal point. What do we fill our hole in with? A zero. And that's how we get 80. And yes, I know you can do 8 times 10 in your head, but when you get the larger numbers, this is where it's going to come in handy. Our second example, 7 milligrams. We want to convert this, mil, these milligrams into grams. So let's look at our chart here. Find the unit. Which one is larger, milligrams or grams? The gram is larger. It tells us that one gram is equivalent to 1,000 milligrams. So this is our unit rate. So we're going to write it. One gram equals 1,000 milligrams. This is the top part of your proportion. Okay, the bottom you fill in with what you know. We don't know how many grams there are. That's what we're trying to find. We know that there are seven milligrams, so that goes under the milligram side. Now you need to know the direction to move. We're going from the known, from the seven milligrams, to the unknown. So we have to go from a thousand to one. We're getting smaller. That means we're dividing, and we're dividing by a thousand. Then you have to divide. Use the same scale factor on the bottom. All right, so our number is seven. We're dividing seven by a thousand. We're not gonna do long division. We're doing this mentally by sliding the decimal point. So here's our seven whole number. There's the decimal point. We're getting smaller. So which direction do we need to move? Well, just like your arrow showing, you need to move to the left to make smaller numbers. How many zeros are there in a thousand? There are three. So we wanna make this smaller by three place values. So take your decimal point, move it one place, two place, three place. Our new decimal point goes right here. We ha do have two holes, so we have to fill those in with zeros. So seven milligrams is equivalent to seven thousandths grams. And that's all there is to it. It's pretty easy, right? Okay, let's do some practice. Uh, we're going to start with your practice problem B and we're converting kilograms to grams. So that's gonna be over here under mass. Which one is larger? The kilograms. The unit rate tells us that one kilogram is equivalent to 1,000 grams. So I'm gonna write this. One kilogram is equal to 1,000 grams. Okay, that's the top part of my proportion. The bottom part I'm gonna fill in with what I know. I know that there's 543 and 4,500 kilograms. So that goes under my kilograms. 543.45. And I'm looking for how many grams that is going to be. There's my proportion. I'm ready to solve. I'm going from the known kilograms to the unknown grams. So I'm going from the left to the right, from one to a thousand. I'm increasing, so I multiply, multiply by a thousand. I know these are things that you know, but I'm saying it because they're things you should be saying in your head. You have to use the same scale factor down here. So I'm going to take my 543.45 and I'm going to multiply it by a thousand. So I'm going to increase it by how many place values? Count your zeros. One, two, three. Take the decimal point. We're going to move it to the right. That's the direction of our arrow. Three place values. Here's one. Here's two. Here's three. The new decimal goes here. I have one hole that I fill in with a zero. So my answer is going to be 543,450 grams. Please make sure that you rewrite your answer nice and neat, that you use commas if necessary. Okay.
Move on to example E. Now this one's a little bit different because we have meters and centimeters and we want to convert them all to millimeters. There's a couple of different ways you can do this. You can take the 25 meters and you can convert it to centimeters and then add that to the 30 centimeters and then whatever that answer is you convert to millimeters. That's one way of doing it. Okay, so this is option A. Option A. Then you have an option B. Let me change the color here. Okay, option B is that you're going to take your 25 meters and you're going to convert it directly to millimeters. You're going to take your 30 centimeters and you're going to convert it directly to millimeters. Then you're going to add up your millimeters to get the total millimeters. That's option B. Either option will work for you. Working option A is basically the same thing that we did up here in example B. You're just doing two different conversions. You're first converting the meters to, millimeter, to centimeters and then you're converting all the centimeters to millimeters. Okay, I'm going to work option B because it's a little bit different. So the first thing I want to do is convert my meters to my millimeters. So if I look up here in my chart, I see that one millimeter doesn't equal a hundred centimeters, well it equals a hundred centimeters, but we want it to know how many millimeters it's going to equal. So we have a little step here. To get rid of this step, we need to multiply the centimeters times the millimeters. And that will give us how many total millimeters one meter is. Okay, so instead of going straight across saying one meter equals blank millimeters, we have a step. We have to get rid of the centimeters first, so we multiply 100 centimeters times the 10 millimeters, and that's going to give us a thousand. So one meter is going to equal 1,000 millimeters. And we have 25 meters, and we're looking for how many millimeters that is. So we're going from the known to the unknown, so we're going from the left to the right. We're increasing scale factors times 1,000. 25 times 1,000 equals 25,000, it's a comma. Now we're going to do the same thing with the centimeters. Centimeters to millimeters, coming back up here, it shows us that one centimeter equals 10 millimeters. Okay, so there's no steps there, so we can write it. One centimeter equals 10 millimeters. We have 30 centimeters and we want to know how many millimeters is that. So again, we're going from the known to the unknown. We're going from left to right. Our skill factor is times 10, and 30 times 10 is 300. 300 millimeters, 25,000 millimeters, all we have to do is add the two together, and we get 25,300 millimeters. Okay, that confused you, then you need to pause the video, rewind it, and listen to it again, and make sure that you understand the steps. If you're still confused, talk to your teacher. Okay, now you're ready to go to your Ed Puzzle practice problems.